um, parties for his fellow officials and others. And the emperor, Lihoju, heard of this and arranged for his court artist, Gu Hongzhong, to be hidden in Han's house so that he can observe all this secretly and paint the goings-on of Han Zizai for the emperor to see. Uh, kind of a visual report. Also, it's supposed to have been shown to Han Zizai himself so that he would realize that his dissipation was known. Uh, there are various versions of the story, but that's essentially what it is. And here we have the first section of the scroll. This is taken from a reproduction. I'll show lots of detail slides made by my colleague and old friend in Ann Arbor, Dick Edwards. Um, very, very fine slides. Which will show us close-ups of the figures. Uh, anyway, here is the first scene. Now let's go on. The next, please. Here's the main group in the center, uh, seated around a table with things to eat and drink on it, and uh, all turn toward music. This scene is a little bit like the tuning the lute and drinking tea by or after Zhou Feng that we saw in a, pre in a previous lecture, where everything concentrates on a source of sound. That's an interesting subject in itself. Han Shi Tsai sits, as we see here, relaxed, on a platform bed or kong, his legs drawn up under him, his hands hanging, listening like the others. Uh, he's accompanied by a lovely courtesan wearing a white dress with a circlet of flowers in her hair. I think that's what it is. Throughout the painting, as we'll see, he's never without female companionship. Now on the table you see, very interestingly, a lot of dishes with things in them and also in the near, at the nearest point, um, what seem to be celadon, or at any rate, uh, monochrome uh, wine pourers set in bowls, with which would have hot water to keep it warm, and also cups. Here's a photograph, which I took from a magazine, an uh, uh, Asian art magazine, of pots and dishes with fruit in them on a table, cleverly arranged, as you see, to match the table in the painting. Uh, I think this was done by Rose Kerr, or is it Carr, of the Victoria and Albert Museum in London. So thanks to her, or whoever did this anyway. Near us on the table, as you see, are uh, the pots which match those in the painting. These are actual late sung or southern sung ceramics, chosen to match those in the painting. So the artist of the scroll, as we see from this, depicted ceramics of his own time, what is the late sung, instead of trying to depict those of Gu Hongzhong's time. <clears throat> and this is generally true of copyists of old paintings. They don't try to get the costumes right, obviously, or objects in the painting generally to match those of the purported date. And uh, as we'll see, they don't, uh, with picture paintings within the paintings, they use styles of their own time rather than trying for the styles of the time of the, the painting is supposed to be. Okay, here is a detail of that, close up close. Well, this is a very great interest for... Um, ceramic specialists that helps them to date the scroll or the copy of the scroll or whatever, and some writing has been done about this, needless to say. Here again, even closer, really close up. As I say, the uh, wine pourers, with uh, of course removable lids for filling, uh, are um, set into containers and bowls, big bowls of hot water to keep them warm, and then uh, cups on stands, one of them to the left here turned over. Okay, uh, as I say, ceramic specialists would uh, would um, look very hard at these ceramics, but not your old professor. He's looking in the beds. Ha <laughs> ha! And what do we see when we look in the bed? The next, please. Okay, here's the bed, very close to the beginning of the scroll. Um, now let me do the art historical thing first. That is to point out that in the bed is a panel set in with a painting, an ink monochrome painting on silk. And that ink monochrome painting is way out of date, anachronistic for the 10th century, for the time of Gu Hongzhong. And it's uh, probably uh, Southern Song, that is 12th and 13th century. In the 12th and 13th century in the court, 12th century especially, lots of court copies were made of old paintings in the imperial collection, as this was. I mean, the Gu Hongzhong was in the imperial collection. And this is, I would believe, a court copy made at that time 12th, 12th century or so, after um, after Gu Hongzhong's original. So we have to recognize that some features that are some late Song in, in date and some features that are early. Now, otherwise, when we shift our 
our historical attention a bit lower, we see a uh, the bed clothes, a big rumpled, not rumpled, well-filled uh, uh, com comforter or quilt or something with designs on it. And then down below, we see the end of a lute, a pipa, sticking out. Well, what is happening here is that some one of our beautiful entertainers who are seen numbers of them throughout the scroll, um, has taken time out, laid down her lute, and is disporting herself under the bedclothes, but in full view of the people outside. Um, well, this apparently happened. If you, I remember reading something in writing by Stephen Owen, the great Tong painting, you know, Tong poetry specialist, more or more than that, but among other things, at Harvard, uh, in which he points out that from literary evidence, uh, sex that was relatively open to the to the viewers w went on in Tong parties. That's interesting. We think of the Chinese as being so highly mm, what modest and so, but not 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 all. Okay, now we go on. Now then, at the other end of that section that I was just showing, uh, here is the source of the sound: a, uh, a palace, uh, not a palace lady, an entertainer, uh, courtesan, prostitute, if you will. Uh, one of the people who were brought in by Han Chi Tsai to entertain at his parties, she is sitting in front of another screen and playing on her lute, and all the people are turned toward her. The uh, high official next to her may be looking at her with more than musical interest, but that is uh, true throughout the painting. We have people looking at each other in very significant ways. Um, behind the, on the screen behind her is another painting, again ink monochrome, and again um, very much of the late Song period. Could even be later, but I think late Song is a good date for this painting. We can date it also by such features as the, uh, the designs and the colors of the costumes worn especially by the ladies, which are very much what we know from late Song painting. The next, please. Now we go on to the next section. Each section is divided from the next by a screen. Uh, and it's as though they were separate spaces. But uh, in fact, uh, uh, they are uh, what uh, continuous representation narration, whatever you call it, in which the same figure, especially uh, Han Shi Tsai, appears in each of the scenes. He is mm, master of ceremonies. He's the host. He's the everything. And here you see him at the beginning playing on a drum. And in this case, um, there's a little girl, the little girl with blue robe uh, in the middle of the composition who's dancing and everybody's watching her dance. Uh, another girl to the left of her is clapping her hands and a uh, one of the uh, people wearing kind of official cap to the right of her is clapping uh, cla with wooden clappers. We see those in paintings. Behind him is a, is a monk. Uh, so part of the the, the, the whole scene is made even more scandalous by the fact that monks were taking part. Uh, this is very improper indeed. And then there's this uh, a, a red-robed official seated and so on. And then over to the left of this section, this is one long section of the scroll again, uh, taken from a reproduction. We see two serving, uh, or a serving girl with a tray and another woman with a lute. And then we see another bed. And beyond it, again, Han Chi Tsai will have gone to the detail of that. Here we go. This is, the, here's that section up close. Um, the, uh, the bed, again, is occupied. Um, again, people having sex under the blanket, but uh, in full view and presumably uh, full hearing of the people around. Here again, we may have two sounds going on. Uh, the people in the alcove next to them on the far left, and we'll show in a minute, which include Han Chi Tsai himself again, um, may very well be able to hear what is going on in the bed. Um, okay, this is uh, what we only imagine, but the point is that the painting uh, invites this kind of exploration and imagining. It has all these really uh, lurid and interesting little narrative bits tucked into it. Uh, uh, we also see a tall uh, candle on a stand here in the center. Okay, next please. Here, yeah. Here is the, here is the uh, lady with the lute, very beautiful blue, long scarf uh, held over her, uh, over her arms, 
and uh, she's turning to look at this other girl, the little girl who is carrying a tray, a pair, a pair of figures again. As I say, the colors and the and actually the um, the way the women are drawn has looked very much like Southern Song. Late in this course, we'll see Southern Song paintings, that is, 12th, 13th century paintings, court paintings, in which the women are slender like this, and the faces are like this, and the colors are like this. The next place. And here is the bed. And again, in the far end of the bed and the side of the bed, you see panels with ink monochrome landscapes. The one on the end of the bed seems to be a kind of storm scene, maybe windblown branches of trees hanging down from a maybe an overhanging branch over a river, and what seem to be fishermen in boats underneath. There's a pillow, by the way, a very hard kind of pillow that the Chinese used. If you've slept in a Chinese old-style hotel, you know exactly what you're up against, or Japanese too, for that matter. Women didn't want to disarray their, unarrange their hairdos. At any rate, the participants in the sexual whatever going on here are not interested in don't need a pillow. Okay, the next, and here in the uh, little in the uh, scene just to the left of this, here is Han Chi's eye, seen again, long bearded, larger than the other figures, with um, uh, two lovely court ladies. Not I keep saying court ladies. I mean courtesans, prostitutes anyway, beside him in this alcove, and he's looking down at a uh, another another girl. Again, with this kind of significant look, things passing between them. Meanwhile, they are probably able to hear what is happening in the adjoining uh, bed space. Now, here are the next slide. You see them at the right here, with the short passage I just showed, a kind of a large uh, kong or chair, uh, enclosed chair, pick, uh, piece of furniture here. And then there's a screen, green and blue-green in color, this, by the way, has large imperial seals on it. Big seals like this are almost always emperor seals. And then in the next section, here is Hanji Tsai still again. This time he's seated in a chair, his leg, his feet drawn up, slippers below him. Uh, two of the ladies and a girl with a fan waiting on him, looking at him, taking his orders, whatever they may be. And um, then beyond that, the a, a, a group of five female musicians, all playing flutes. Very beautiful. This is a section that everybody loves. It's been much copied and imitated by a modern painter and so on. And here we see, here's the next slide. Here we see, you know, that's absolutely at the best, the kind of coloring that uh, is uh, typical of the best of Southern Sung court painting. That is pale greens and blues and all, all hues and fine designs and just beautiful, beautiful painting. And the lady's slender, uh, not like plump tongue, some plump tongue ladies. And they're all playing on flutes, either horizontal flutes or vertical flutes. Uh, Chinese had both kinds. Anyway, this scene is very, very popular, as I say, and is much reproduced and much imitated. The next, please. Here are two of them, uh, one with pale blue and white, and pink, white, rose color skirt, and then the other with a pale green and red uh, turning in different ways. A lovely, lovely uh, group. Okay, next. Then, at the left of, left end of that scene, there is a seated official holding cla wooden clappers again, uh, sort of keeping time with the uh, flute players, flute orchestra. And another screen with another painting on it, another Southern Song, but I won't talk about that. And then, interestingly, sort of joining one next section to the next, we have two figures, a standing official looking significantly at the lady, and the lady to the left of the screen uh, with her hand raised looking at him. In other words, uh, the uh, figures are used to join one scene to another. So we have a kind of a uh, ambiguous but you very um, what effective division of the scene by the screens, which nevertheless has suggestions of continuous continuous space. 